If you miss Combat Sports Digest, you miss... Welcome to the first episode of Combat Sports Digest, the only combat show with teeth. I'm Jim Rotundo, your host for this week's show, and next to me is our co-host, none other than Scott Green. Scott's the owner and founder of the Shamrock Wrestling Club. Now, Scott, you're in a new facility here. Why don't you tell us a little about it? Yeah, we're down at the new Shamrock Athletic Center on Riverside Drive, the former Valley's Total Fitness. It's been the natural growth of what started as Shamrock Wrestling Club about 13 years ago. Um, we're expanding currently, um, always re reinventing ourselves a little bit. Um, we're into mixed martial arts, and now we have a facility 12,000 square feet that can service the whole family's fitness needs. Thanks, Scott. Now, we've got a great show lined up for you this week. We've got high school wrestling featuring the Section 4 Duels and the Mack League Championships. We've got college wrestling with the Binghamton Bearcats and the Cornell Big Red. We've got an interview with John Jones, who just came off a big win in UFC 94. And we've got our training segment called In the Gym with Marshall Dornick. And we'll be right back. Pops Athletics wants you to be part of its 2009 Technique and Live Wrestling Camp August 2nd through 5th at Binghamton University. This competitively priced camp is designed to give wrestlers valuable insight on what it takes to be successful at the highest levels of wrestling. You'll work with Binghamton University head coach Pat Papalizio and his staff of counselors to improve your skills both on and off the mat. Camp size is limited, so hurry up and call 607-372-4118 for more information. Looking for someone to help you reach your health and fitness goals? Marshall Dornick of HealthStrong is your answer. His six years of experience in the field of sports medicine working with a wide variety of athletes make him uniquely qualified to address multiple fitness and health goals. Marshall is also a certified strength and conditioning specialist and a performance enhancement specialist. So whether you're a serious athlete looking to gain a competitive edge or a weekend warrior working toward optimal fitness, HealthStrong can take you there. Combat Sports Digest is sponsored by the Shamrock Athletic Center at 47 Riverside Drive in Johnson City. The Shamrock Athletic Center is your home for complete family fitness. The Binghamton Bearcats wrestling team started off the season on a good note. They had a little bit of a rough spell in January, but February's been different for the Bearcats. Yeah, I think you're seeing the results of a young team just getting established and wrestling one of the toughest schedules in the country. Several top 25 teams appeared on our schedule in January, and we took some lumps, but we rebounded well in February, started strong with three straight wins, and are looking forward to keeping some of that momentum going into the conference tournament and the NCAA championships. We've got the Bearcats match with Sacred Heart. We've also got a match featuring the Cornell Big Red, the number three ranked team in the country. We're in the West Gym at Binghamton University for the 11 and 12 Binghamton Bearcats Colonial Athletic Association match against the Sacred Heart Pioneers. We'd start off with the 149 pound match between the Bearcats Matt Kaler and the Pioneers Anthony Priori. Kaler takes a shot in the first period and is fighting to gain control to get the takedown. He finally gets it and he goes up two to nothing. Kaler's up by one in the third period, but Priori's got him in a compromising position. Priori gets the takedown at the edge of the mat with 15 seconds left and pulls out a 6-5 win to put Sacred Heart up 3-0. After a lengthy absence, Nate Patterson is back in action against Jonathan Rizzatello. He just picked up some back points and is going for the pin with a variation of a half Nelson. Patterson gets the pin in 2 minutes and 34 seconds to put BU up 6-3. Ryan McGarity is taking on Sacred Heart's Michael Hartman in the 165-pound bout. McGarity gets a takedown near the edge of the mat and puts Hartman on his back. 
He gets three bag points to go up seven to nothing on his way to a 14 to one major decision. After Matt Beretta got a forfeit at 174 to put BU up 16 to three, Josh Patterson went up against Brandon Lapp in the 184 pound contest. Patterson is ranked eighth in the country. Early in the first period, Patterson takes Lapp to the mat and right to his back. Patterson gets the pin in a minute nine, and that would be a school record 18th pin this season. Patterson improves to 35 and four on the season, and BU is up 22 to three. Tioga native Corey Waite took on Rich Eichenlaub in the 197 pound match, and he starts off the first period with a takedown to go up to nothing. Waite would add another takedown later in the match, and he went on to an 11 to six win. Now BU is up 25 to three. Dan Bittner got pinned in the 285 pound match by Paul Schweighardt in a minute 17 to make it 25 to nine. In the 125 pound contest, Marathon native and Shanrock alumnus Tyler Malmberg takes on Michael Impelizzeri. Early in the second period, Malmberg has Impelizzeri on his back and he's not going anywhere. Malmberg gets the foul in four minutes and eight seconds to put BU up 31 to nine. The Bearcats will drop the last two matches, but they go on to even their record at 12 and 12 with a 31 to 18 win over the Sacred Heart Pioneers. BU's won three in a row after a rough January and Coach Papalizio explains why. I think the mindset and the attitude and the, and the tone in the wrestling room is obviously a difference in what's happening in competition right now. And you know, our, our, we're focusing here on the end of the season. That's what we get judged on. We're at the Friedman Wrestling Center at Cornell University for Senior Day and the number three ranked Cornell Big Reds final home match of the year against Ivy League opponent Penn University. We'll start off with five-time New York State champion and two-time All-American Troy Nickerson of Shenango Forks. He's ranked first in the country and he's facing number 14th ranked Raleigh Paterkin. Nickerson's got a hold of the single leg, but Paterkin's trying to get out. Watch this, wow! Turkin tries to do a somersault, but Nickerson manages to hold on to the leg, and the ref restarts the match. This time, Paterkin gets a hold of Troy's leg, and he gets a takedown, but quicker than you can say, well, quickly, Nickerson reverses the situation, and it looks like he has Paterkin in trouble. He takes him to his back and keeps him there the rest of the first period to go up 5-2 on his way to a 7-4 win. Troy talks about the victory. I didn't, I didn't wrestle my best, um, but a win's a win. Um, you know, I think I'm in practice, you know, working on scrambles, working in positions like that, and, um, you know, it, it all comes down to what we do in the room, and that's why we're so successful out here. Number 13th ranked Mike Gray took on Brian Orenzio at 133 pounds. Gray had control of the match in the beginning, and he went on to win 10 to 3 to put Cornell up 6 to nothing. Big Red would lose the next two matches and Penn tied the score at six. In the last match before intermission, defending national champion and third ranked in the country, Jordan Lean takes on ninth ranked Matt Dragon in the 157 pound match. Lean shot for a single leg in the first period, and picks up the two points and nearly two to nothing lead. This would be a close match, but with Lean in control the whole way, as Jordan Lean improved to 20 and two on the year. Here's what he thought of his performance. I think I wrestled uh, pretty well, all things considered. Um, the scoreboard, there wasn't a lot of points up, four to one, but um, sometimes in those type of matches when guys are trying to keep it close and, uh, and steal it late, um, sometimes the worst mistake you can make is try to attack too much and too much and get yourself out of position. After the break, we got to see the number one ranked 165 pounder, Mac Lunas, who's been out for a month following an injury. He jumped out to an early lead against 19th ranked Zach Shanaman with this takedown. However, we'd have to go to overtime, but Lunas managed to get this takedown in the first 30 seconds to keep his record perfect. Number six ranked Steve Ansaravich took on Scott Griffin in the 174 pound match, and Griffin held Ansaravich off until the end of the first period when he muscled him to the mat and got two back points to go up four nothing. And Sir Average went on to an eight to three, put Cornell up 15 to six. The Big Red goes on to a 24 to nine win, and they improved to 10 and two on the season. Coach Cole was pleased with the performance. Wrestled real well last week, and then uh, 
fairly well this week. Obviously, I wanted like to shut them out, but it didn't happen. So guys were looking better. Mike Gray's looking really good, uh, but they were ready. They wrestled really hard tonight. Next up is our In the Gym segment with Marshall Dornick. And Scott, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Marshall can offer the local athlete? Well, Marshall has spent the last eight years of his life working um, specifically with Division I athletes, first at West Point and for the last few years at Binghamton Wrestling. He's the head athletic trainer for our wrestling team and volleyball team. So he really knows the ins and outs of what athletes need to, need to do to prevent injury, to get stronger, and he's an incredible resource to have down here at the Shamrock Athletic Center. Okay, now we're going to learn about bench presses in the gym. Probably one of the best uh, overall upper body uh, push movements you can really do to kind of develop strength and through your chest, shoulders, uh, and triceps is going to be uh, like your bench press. Uh, as far as uh, hitting all the different muscles of the, the chest and the pectorals, um, just your basic bench press is really going to be a good general movement to develop the, the entire uh, muscle of the pec, both from like the inner and outer regions. There's really not uh, any specific way to kind of develop both like the inner uh, and the outer. It's just like one muscle belly. So uh, as you go through a bench press, you're going to hit uh, all the muscle fibers. There's a lot of different variations you can do off of the bench press from a wide grip to really emphasize the pecs a little bit more to more of a narrow grip where you're going to hit uh, triceps a little bit better. As far as getting setting up for the bench press, um, you want to make sure that when you slide under the bar, uh, the bar is right about at eye level. A slight arch to the back is fine to have. Uh, it's almost I would almost recommend that too because when you uh, arch your back, you're also going to squeeze your shoulder blades uh, down and in and that protects the shoulders a little bit. When you're doing bench, it's really important to make sure that you protect your shoulders. A lot of times you'll see <clears throat> people go flat and flare their elbows out wide when they bench and that puts a lot uh, of extra stress onto the shoulders uh, and that extra stress can translate into uh, a lot of injuries as far as uh, tendonitis and rotator cuff goes. So you really kind of want to tuck your shoulders down and in, uh, get your elbows close to the body uh, and then just take a kind of a, a comfortable grip for you uh, as far as width is concerned. Uh, usually about shoulder width uh, is kind of like the general recommendation to start out uh, and then you can kind of play with your grip width, width from there just to see what's uh, most comfortable for you. You want to have a good steady push all the way through the movement. You don't want to you know, bring the bar down too fast, bounce it off your chest, nice, slow and controlled. So it's always a good good rule to have somebody spotting you there on the bench uh, in case you lose your strength or you can't bang out that last extra rep so you don't uh, get stuck or have to slide, slide something down where you would injure yourself. Looking for someone to help you reach your health and fitness goals? Marshall Dornick of HealthStrong is your answer. His six years of experience in the field of sports medicine working with a wide variety of athletes make him uniquely qualified to address multiple fitness and health goals. Marshall is also a certified strength and conditioning specialist and a performance enhancement specialist. So whether you're a serious athlete looking to gain a competitive edge or a weekend warrior working toward optimal fitness, HealthStrong can take you there. Pops Athletics wants you to be part of its 2009 Technique and Live Wrestling Camp August 2nd through 5th at Binghamton University. This competitively priced camp is designed to give wrestlers valuable insight on what it takes to be successful at the highest levels of wrestling. You'll work with Binghamton University head coach Pat Papalizio and his staff of counselors to improve your skills both on and off the mat. Camp size is limited, so hurry up and call 607-372-4118 for more information. Combat Sports Digest is sponsored by the Shamrock Athletic Center at 47 Riverside Drive in Johnson City. It's time for this week's wrestling highlights, and we're going to start off with a trip down to Shenango Forks High School for the Section 4 Duels. Now the Waverly Wolverines, they lost to Shenango Forks last year in the duels, and they come into this year's duels as the number one team in Section 4 in the small school division. Now will they be able to beat the Forks, or is the Forks going to come out on top again? We're back at Shenango Forks High School for the finals of the Section 4 Duels Tournament. And this year's matchup will be a rematch of last year's final. We've got the Waverly Wolverines and the Shenango Forks Blue Devils. We'll start off with the 130 pounders with the Blue Devils Jordan Dyer strong arms Devin Soper to the mat and right to his back. Dyer turned this into a five point move for a five point lead and went on to win the match nine to one. With 135 pounds, Casey Lenabe, a returning New York State place winner, comes out of the gate and takes Dylan Gutierrez right to his back. Lenabe gives the Forks a 10-0 lead with a pin in 37 seconds. We have a good match brewing at 140 pounds 
between Waverly's Brett Seawald and Forks' Tyler Lush. Seawalt manages to get a double leg takedown that jumps out to a 2-0 lead in the first period. Then in the third period, Lush Gator rolls Seawalt and takes him to his back. The back points give him a 5-2 lead. Seawalt would get an escape, but Lush would hold off Seawalt's attempt to score points and he pulls out a 5-3 win, giving Forks a 13-0 lead. Next up, Jordan Barnett's taking on Logan Walker in a 152-pound match and gets a reversal for the early lead. Then in the third period, Walker's trying to counter a single leg attempt by sitting out, but he lands right on his head and goes limp briefly. Walker would be okay, but he could not continue and the Forks went ahead 19-3. Man, maybe he should have had a helmet on. At 160 pounds, Jesse Barnett went down 3-2 to Zach McCutcheon, but McCutcheon gets a single leg takedown to take a 5-2 lead, and he went on to win 5-3. Ryan Lush moved up to 171 pounds to wrestle Jared Alexander. It was a good move on his part as he pinned Alexander in 11 seconds. Forks is up 25-6. Henry Petrie picks up Jace Bois and takes it to the mat for a takedown in the 215-pound match. Petrie would hold on for a 3-1 win, and Waverly's mounting a comeback, it's 25-12. In the next match, Waverly's Dylan Burns pinned Dave Sampson in 3 minutes and 4 seconds, and now it's 28-24 going into the last match. Here we go. Travis Barnett is down 1-0, but he gets a nice reversal here and takes Zach Cooney to his back. Barnett would hold on to win 10-8, and that makes Shenango Forks the top dual meet team in Section 4 with a 31-24 win over Waverly. The MAC Wrestling Championships were held in Sydney recently, and some of Section 4's finest wrestlers come out of the MAC. Now we've got Tyler Beckwith, Nick Wilcox, Victor Coronado, Cody Reed, and a whole bunch of other ones. So we're going to head on down to Sydney for the finals of the MAC Championships. We're at Sydney High School for the 2009 MAC League Championships. Green enters the final round ahead of BGA with Walton in third place. First off, the 96 pound weight class, Sydney Scott Stafford's taking on Unadilla Valley's Lucas Lyons. Stafford took a 5 0 lead in the first period. Then he used an arm bar to get Lyons on his back, and after a little persuasion, he managed to pin Lyons in 3 minutes and 4 seconds to win the 96 pound weight class. After a scoreless first period in the 119 pound match, defending sectional winner Danny Gormley from Bainbridge Guilford Afton takes a shot at Green's Mike Beckwith. He gets the takedown and goes ahead 2 to nothing. Gormley follows that up with an escape and another takedown midway through the third period, and he wins the championship 5 to nothing over Mike Beckwith. Defending three-time Section 4 champion Nick Wilcox of Green took a 5 to nothing lead over BGA's Justin Cerigliano in the 125 pound championship. He sinks the half Nelson in on Srigliano, takes him to his back, and he's trying to get the pin. Srigliano's putting up a fight, but he's going to have to hold on for about 45 more seconds. He almost gets off his back, but Wilcox put the clamps on and pins him in a minute 28. I believe that's Wilcox's fifth MAC championship. In the 135 pound match, Green's Mickey Brown wrestled a good first period against defending sectional and MAC champion Tyler Pete of Unadilla Valley. However, Pete's experience got the best of Brown, and Tyler got a takedown in the second period and turned Brown on his back here in the third period to go on for an 8-0 win to lock up the championship. BGA's Victor Coronado was looking to defend his MAG championship in the 152-pound weight class against Unitigo's Sean Hanrahan. Coronado got things started off with getting a single leg takedown in the first period to go up 2-0. Later on in the third period, Coronado would take a 7-0 lead with this takedown. Coronado finished up strong and taking an 8-1 decision to win the 152-pound title. Our featured match of the night was the 171-pound final between Walton's Cody Reed and Oxford's Travis Frank. Frank handed Reed his only loss of the year earlier in the season. Second period action, Travis Frank's on the bottom and he executes a stand-up right at the whistle. He turns in to Reed and gets one point for the escape to make it one to nothing. Moving to the third period, Reed's on the bottom and he pulls off a nice sit out and he gets to neutral position to tie the match at one. He almost gets a takedown as they go out of bounds. 
This was a very exciting match, and here we see in the third period, Travis Frank is trying to get out of bounds, but before he gets there, Cody Reed catches him in a single leg. Reed's fighting to get the takedown, while Travis Frank is fighting to avoid it. Neither one of these guys will budge until finally Frank manages to get out of bounds and avoid the takedown. There's about 16 seconds left in the third period, and Frank has Reed by the head, and Reed's trying to push towards the end of the mat. Now they're at the edge of the mat, Frank pulls Reed's arm and spins around him. The referee gives Frank two points for a takedown, the crowd can't believe it, and it's deja vu all over again for Cody Reed. The rest talk and don't feel Travis Frank had control, so we go into overtime tied at one. The first overtime was scoreless, and Reed managed to ride Frank for the first of two 30-second second overtime periods. Frank let Reed up in the second 30-second period, hoping to get a takedown to win. Reed fought off Travis's takedown attempts and wins a thrilling match 2-1, to one, taking the 171-pound title. Up next is the 189-pound final between undefeated state runner-up Tyler Beckwith from Green and Tyler Newman from Unitigo. We're in the second period with Beckwith up 2 to nothing. Beckwith locks Newman up and hips him to the mat. Beckwith puts him on his back and the ref counts away. Newman was stuck there for a while and Tyler Beckwith finally got the pin at the 244 mark to win the 189 pound title. Green would take the overall team championship by 17 points over Bainbridge Guilford Afton. For the escape. Combat Sports Digest is sponsored by Pops Athletics. The Pops Athletics Wrestling Camp starts August 2nd at Binghamton University. Combat Sports Digest is sponsored by the Shamrock Athletic Center at 47 Riverside Drive in Johnson City. The Shamrock Athletic Center is your home for complete family fitness. Hey guys, this is John Jones from Team Bomb Squad, and you're watching Combat Sports Digest. The sport of mixed martial arts is becoming very popular these days, and we're blessed in this area to have several professional level athletes competing, you know, in UFC, WEC, and other organizations like that. And this week, we've got a special interview with John Jones, who just came off a big win in UFC 94. Now, Scott has a little bit of knowledge about John Jones. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, John Jones is a local guy. He won a state title for Union Endicott Wrestling, and uh, he actually won a junior national title. Um, wrestling for Iowa Central. Uh, mixed martial arts, if you have a TV set, you know how popular it is now. Uh, and like Jim said, there's lots of local guys, Tandon McCrory, John Franchi, that are doing it professionally now, former Shamrock wrestlers that are out there making the transition into the great, you know, new sport of mixed martial arts. Okay, now sit back and have a look at John Jones. Twenty-one-year-old Endicott native John Jones from Cortland, New York's team Bomb Squad beat the odds and came away from his UFC 94 fight against Stefan Bonner, a winner on more than just one level. John began his journey to the UFC after an unexpected bit of good news. I was sent to like a really, really good junior college for wrestling, and uh, yeah, I had a full ride to wrestle for Gail Sanderson at Iowa State, and um, my fiance, you know, grew up in with for four years. Uh, we found out that we were having a, we were expecting a child, and I thought that I would put school on the back burner temporarily, and and uh, you know get into the workforce. John, a two-time Section Four champion, won the 2,589-pound New York State Championship while at Union Endicott High School. He went on to win the 2,797-pound JUCO Wrestling Championship at Iowa Central. Faced with giving up wrestling to provide for his fiance and soon-to-be-born daughter, John got creative. Wrestling is such a huge passion of mine, and um, when I realized that I would have to give that up, you know, I kind of felt empty inside. And MMA was uh, something that filled that void, and it kind of made me feel as if I could continue to wrestle and be a provider at the same time. And uh, and that's why I took it up. You know. An interesting element of this story is that John Jones is a Christian, and his father is a pastor. John's been raised with the good values of Christ-like living, so how did his family react to him being involved in the world of MMA? It was, it was kind of a rough little time, you know. I was supposed to be going to Iowa State and, you know, pursuing uh, a career as a wrestler, but, you know, things happened and, and things had to change up, and I started MMA, and, you know, they thought I was too much of a nice guy. They thought that, you know, that it would change my character, and, and you know, I've proven the wrong this nice guy, who by the way is a nice guy, currently holds an 8-0 record with five knockouts. He's won both of his UFC fights by unanimous decision. What's the transition from wrestling to MMA been like? 
So MMA is a great time, you know, I'm always learning new moves and there's just so much to learn, you know, that you can always improve uh, with things. So it's been fun. I absolutely am obsessed with the things that I'm not good at and the uh, things that I need to improve on. And that, that's what's, uh, I think, set me aside and make me a great fighter because I just love learning more. How did John feel after his win in UFC 94 against Stefan Bonner? Fight Stefan Bonner was definitely a, a step up in my career and um, you know, it just felt great. It's elevated me to a new level, and, and uh, you know, now I got to keep up, keep pace with that type of fight, and it's going to be exciting. Sports like boxing, MMA, and the like aren't known as sports for good guys. Does John feel his faith in Christ gives him an extra responsibility to his sport? Definitely, I uh, I represent Christ in all I do, and um, and it's exciting, and I try not to be you know a hypocrite, and and uh, you know my faith is is. Is my you know Christ is my main sponsor. I always say, and uh, I definitely you know I, I realize a lot of people look up to me, and a lot of people know that I'm a Christian, so I try to live that lifestyle and all that I do. So how does John stay focused with all this new excitement? Uh, I've uh, recently just moved out to Ithaca, New York, where you know I don't know many people, and I have to stay focused. I'm not up and moving to Las Vegas and, and doing a lot of things that these other fighters are doing. I'm I'm still hungry. I'm really young, and uh, you know I have a lot of people to beat and I have a lot of experience the game. Being a fighter, it's like, you know, nothing ever bothers you, especially like, you know, crazy guys or people trying to see what you got. It's just like, when you fight every day, there's no, there's no need to ever get in anything in the streets or anything crazy. Having a man in their lives that's an athlete can be a challenge for the ladies. How does John's lady feel about his progression up the UFC ladder? Oh, she loves it. She loves the MMA. She's my number one supporter. Um, you know, I'm actually taking off like two weeks from, from the MMA for a while because she goes through so much um, when I'm in a training camp. You know, it's just me coming home, eating and sleeping and kind of being in a grout sometimes and just going back out and working out, you know, three times a day. So, um, it's, you know, it can be unfair to her at times to put up with, uh, you know, all the training and, you know, the dedication that it takes to become um, a really serious fighter. But she understands and and uh, she knows that I had to put my time in and put my work in so that we can uh, live a good life uh, when we're older. So she understands and I love her to death and she's my, she's my girl. So with divine support, the will to win, and the attitude of a winner, John Jones has arrived in the MMA and looks to be one of its brightest stars for a long time to come. From Team Bomb Squad's training facility in Cortland, New York, I'm Jim Rotundo. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Combat Sports Digest. Hope you enjoyed the show. Now, next week, we've got another action-packed show for you. We've got the Section 4 Championships. We've got an interview with Kyle Dake. We're also going to continue with our coverage of the local mixed martial arts scene, as well as feature some highlights from your Bearcats, who will compete against Buffalo on the 22nd of February at the West Gym. Hey, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.